there! Welcome to the special session of Baiju's on using mind maps for effective revision and quick problem solving. Well, we both know that the exams are approaching quickly, right? And you have less time to revise, you have so many chapters to revise, so many formulas to remember, and while solving questions, you've got to recall everything quickly. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I am not here to scare you, all right? In fact, I am here to give you a brilliant method to revise your topics in a shorter time and keep all the information in your mind so that you can access it all quickly. Sounds good? Okay, so let's take a look at creating mind maps and how mind maps will help you in effectively solving problems and save a lot of time in the process. Yeah? It is a complete win-win. Smart work instead of just hard work, yeah? Let's go, let's go. So, the countdowns for your exams have started, right? Yes. And in order to be the best, I have a few steps that you can follow here that will make you a champion, yeah? First things first, having a customized plan. Okay, that is very, very important. But then what do I mean by customized plan? That's because you know yourself the best, right? Nobody else. So, do you need to dedicate more time to mathematics or to physics? Will you dedicate the whole of tomorrow to four chapters in biology? Well, you will know best. And you are the person in charge of your studies, right? So, have a plan. A proper doable routine, I mean, don't try to be a superman, and then stick to this routine every day, okay? Consistency is the key here. So, look at the number of days that you have left and divide that time to study the chapters in a priority order, alright? Okay, the next one is testing. Tests, tests and more tests, I cannot stress on this enough. This is very important as there are many, many different types of questions that can be asked in the tests, right? Exactly. Also, go through the previous year exams papers, yeah? You will get a better idea of all the different types of questions and concepts that are frequently asked. And let me tell you, a lot of these are generally repeated as well, okay? Now, I want you to take a deep breath, okay? Come on, right now, with me. Yes, felt good. Panicking will not help. And you don't want to fall sick during this time as well, right? Yes. So, eat well, get good sleep and take a walk or a jog every day. Alright? You see, having a strong and healthy mind is supported by having a strong and healthy body. Right? So, definitely choose a few methods that will keep you fighting fit, all right? Okay. Now, the fourth and a very important point is revision before exams, right? So, you have been learning and preparing for the exams from the start of the year. Now, it's time to revise. So, the concepts are clear and you just need to ensure that the concepts remain rooted in your mind, right? They remain fresh. And more importantly, all of these concepts and formulas can be recalled easily and quickly when you're writing questions in the exams, right? Exactly. And this is where a super effective method called mind mapping enters. Yeah? So, look here. See, what am I talking about? Say, you go to revise. And here, all of your textbooks and your notebooks and even your calculators and pen are all in front of you, right? But here's the question, where do you start revising? Yeah, I will say, let's say, I'll start with acids, bases and salt. And then I'll go and revise the whole chapter on electricity. Then I'll revise magnetism. But, oh wait, I totally forgot everything on polynomials that I earlier revised. And then, yesterday's revision on hereditary is still pending. What will I do? You see the confusion here? I totally get it. This is what happens, right? Yes. 
That is why I am introducing you to this method called mind mapping. It is revolutionary. A process that reduces confusion, allows you to focus on the right chapters at the right time, and you have a ready-made guide to help you in the time just before the board exam start. Right? Let's go. Let's look at it. So, what is a mind map then? Yeah? Let's define it first. A mind map is basically a tool for creative problem solving. Okay? So, it's basically a visual representation or, in other words, a complete picture of core concepts and their relationships with the key points in the core concepts. Okay? You see, this is a perfect example of a mind map. Okay? You can see that these blue squares are the main concepts, right? And these squares are related with connectors to smaller subtopics, right? You can see over here. And then the key points of that subtopic are connected with arrows, right? So all of it, as you can see, in one go, what does it do? All this breaks down a chapter. So this is the chapter into smaller bits, right? So that your brain can process this visual information much quicker, right? And your brain can actually retain the same information for a much longer amount of time as well. Right. It's actually like clicking a picture and of the whole chapter and storing that picture in your mind, right? Awesome. Okay, okay. So, here's a question. I'll show you two things, all right? One, a color picture of a flower with just the name of the flower written. And the second thing, a 500 word essay describing that particular flower, right? Now tell me, which one will you understand quicker and remember longer? Come on, you can write it in the comments. <laughs> Obviously, the color picture of the flower with its name, right? Yes. That is exactly what a mind map does. And when you remember this picture, you can later recall what were the details, right? Exactly. And why do you think mind mapping is so effective? It is effectively because a mind map gives you a complete picture of the whole chapter. And there are different connections as well, right? So the connections between the concepts of that chapter and the key concepts in one page itself. And most importantly, you can quickly recall and apply a concept all because you have a clear picture of the entire chapter in your mind. Amazing, right? Yes. Now, the thing is, there is a good amount of scientific research yeah, that supports using mind maps actually helps you revise your subjects quickly and efficiently. Okay, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you. There are three types of learners. Okay, what are they? Auditory learners, that is people who learn by listening well, right? Then there comes kinesthetic learners, right? Kinesthetic learners are people who learn better when they're involved with activities and practical experiments and so on. And then we've got visual learners. People who learn better with pictures and graphs. And the amazing fact is that almost 60% or 65% of learners are visual learners. Right? What does that mean? It means that looking at a picture with a few connections like a mind map, right? It's a much, much better way than revising the whole chapter by reading detailed notes page by page by page, right? Exactly. And there is more science, okay? So, you see, people who are more analytical, right? They are actually left brain dominant, right? So, they are more focused on words or numbers, lists and effectively base their knowledge and understanding on logical thinking, okay? but People who are right brain dominant, on the other hand, are more artistic in nature. Yeah. So they are more attracted to colors and they are more imaginative. They think in three dimensional images. And they've got a bit of a tendency to daydream as well. All right. So yeah, that's pretty interesting, right? But you must be thinking, well, what does that have to do with revision? I mean, we're here for revision, right? 
Yes, yes, wait a minute. What if I tell you that a mind map effectively utilizes both parts of the brain? Yes. See, there is the visual information, right? In the form of boxes and circles and arrows. And there is this analytical information like formulas, important points and interrelationship between concepts, right? Basically, a mind map, you're making it very, very easy for your brain to remember all of the information and recall it really quickly, right? Exactly. So, if you make someone's job really easy, what happens? Well, they get it quickly and it stays for a long time. That's what you're doing for your brain, right? Okay, okay, after now, after all of this science and all of the hype created about mind mapping, you must be wondering, Anushri, how do we actually create a mind map? I mean, you haven't told us that. Well, let me explain, let me explain the technique. It's called the three C's method. Okay, so what are the three C's then? The three C's are, here we go, collect, connect and cover. All right. So, let's begin our understanding with the first one that is collect. Okay? Right. Let's see how we go about it. So, to start with the mind mapping process, I want you to keep a separate notepad for the mind maps that you're going to create. All right? And this notepad can be a very thin one also, but keep it an A4 size, big enough. And you can also keep separate notepads for different subjects as well. Right? Now, let me show you how it is done for one math chapter. Yeah, just for example, pair of linear equations. But you can make mind maps of any chapter of any subject. It's very helpful, all right? Let's go, let's go. So, what do you do first? First, you turn to a fresh page and start your mind mapping process by, yes, writing the name of the chapter, right? And the next step is to list out all of the concepts and all of the points that are relevant and important in each subtopic, all right? And so that was the collect step of the mind mapping process, right? In which you basically collect all of the important parts of one chapter, right? The next step is to connect. And yeah, this is where you use the color coding and the arrows and write short notes and basically add to your understanding of a given subtopic, right? And the different concepts that are there within that subtopic, right? Here, again, let's take the example of the same, yeah, pair of linear equations. So, always start at the center of the page by writing the name of the chapter, right? This is the core from which different branches will come out, yeah, for subtopics. Next, what do you do? You focus on the subtopics that branch out, right? So for a pair of linear equations, we look at the solutions obtained when you solve them using coordinate geometry, right? Here, you've got three types of solutions. The first is no solution, then infinite solution, then a unique solution, right? Exactly. Then we look at their details. So if there is no solution, the lines are parallel. And this means that this condition over here is true, right? Right. The next one is infinitely many solutions in which effectively the lines are coincident lines and you've got this condition holding true, right? Exactly. And the third one is unique solution in which the lines just intersect at one point. That means this condition over here holds true, right? So you write all of these key points over here and look at the arrow markings over here, yeah? Make sure the arrows are proper. Then after that, there are three more methods of solving a linear equation in two variables, right? Yes, you've got substitution method, elimination method, and cross multiplication method, right? So here we get the values of x and y from cross multiplication method. And then we follow a method of reducing a pair of linear equation, right? Right, here we go. x comes out 1 upon p minus q and y comes out 1 upon p plus q. You see? This is how we create a mind map for one particular chapter, right? Okay, okay. Now, let's take one more example, yeah? 
let's create a mind map for introduction to trigonometry. Okay, so as I said before, always start with a fresh page for your mind mapping notepad, right? And you've already done the collect over here. Now, for connect, first draw the right angle triangle ABC. As you can see, the angles will be 90 degrees theta and 90 minus theta. Then we write down the first set of concepts in the chapter, right? What are those? Standard trigonometric angles, right? Sine theta is 1 upon cosec theta, cos theta is 1 upon secant theta, and tan theta is 1 upon cot theta. And what they come out from this particular right triangle, right? Exactly. We've connected that. The next concept is the trigonometric ratios of complementary angles, right? There you go. Sin 90 minus theta is cos theta, tan 90 minus theta is cot theta, and cosec 90 minus theta is secant theta, right? And what is the next one? The next concept is trigonometric table of standard angles, right? And you know what? For this, you can also draw your palm and fingers to use as a quick reference for the table that you've drawn over here, right? A very neat trick with which you can draw the whole table, right? I'm pretty sure you know that. Well, let's just get to it once. First things first, you assign the angles to fingers, right? So you've got from thumb, 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees, right? Angles to five fingers. And then you are looking at root over of n by 2, basically, right? Say you want to find out a sine or cos of 60 degrees. So what do you do? You pull down the finger of 60 degrees and then n will be the number of fingers towards the thumb, including the thumb, right? So here you've got 3, right? So sine 60 degrees is root 3 by 2. Now for cos, n is the number of fingers away from the thumb. Here it's 1, right? So cos 60 degrees is equal to root 1 by 2, which is 1 by 2. Pretty simple, isn't it? All right, all right, let's get back to the mind map here. So we have all of these concepts connected. Finally, the last concept, that is three trigonometric identities. You can see sine square theta plus cos square theta equal to 1, secant square theta minus tan square theta equal to 1, and cosecant square theta minus cot square theta equal to 1. Right. And now you have two mind maps ready, right? And you can see that you can always draw little doodles or figures whenever they explain a subtopic better instead of writing long notes over here, right? As you can see, the central concept of trigonometry is a right angle triangle, right? Where we relate sides with angles. There you go. Now, with these two examples of mind maps, We've properly understood, right, the step of connect in the mind mapping process of three C's. Right. Next, we move on to the third step that is cover in the mind mapping process. Okay. So, what do we do here? Keep about 30 minutes every night after your regular schedule. Okay. Here, in these 30 minutes, you open your notebooks and just read the mind maps of the chapters in the same order. Okay. That's it. And do this every night in the same order. All right. As I said, order and consistency are very important. So what are you doing here? Basically, when you do this, you're making a whole memory palace inside your brain. And just after two to three weeks of doing this, you'd have the whole memory palace of all the mind maps imprinted in your head. Okay. All of this can be recalled within seconds while answering questions in the exams, right? That's what we want. Okay, okay. And also, a day or two before the exams, when there's a time crunch, instead of spending hours and hours revising lengthy notes, just take half an hour for each chapter and look through the mind maps. You're good, right? And this brings us to the end of this super exciting and super interesting session on mind mapping, right? As always, you can watch a lot more videos on acing the board exams in our YouTube channel. Now, make sure you like, subscribe and hit the bell button so that you're always in touch with all of the exam prep techniques that we at Baiju's publish on this channel, right? Until next time, all the best, focus on the questions and remember your mind maps and happy learning!